this tutorial we are going to share how to do a production process audit according to VDA 6.3 and focus on question P6.1, process inputs. We will assess how each process input is converted into the process output to meet the customer requirements. In the following tutorials we will assess P6.2 to ensure that the special characteristics are included in the control plans and work instructions. P6.3 to ensure that the employees are qualified to do the job right first time, with the capable equipment is required in P6.4. In P6.5 we will assess the effectiveness and efficiency of the production process, and in P6.6 how the customer requirements were achieved at the delivery of the final product. Today we are going to audit the operational manager, to assess how effective he manages the production processes. Question 6.1.1 Has the project been transferred from development to serial production, and is a reliable start guaranteed? The project manager has to transfer the serial production to the operational manager. The responsibilities for the entire handover process are regulated and acknowledged. A successful production process and product release, PPA, must take place before the first production shipment. All documented results must be available. The process FMEA and product FMEA must be continuously updated as the production process are optimized. All tools, test and measuring equipment must be capable and available in the necessary quantities to ensure customer volumes will be achieved. Question 6.1.2 Are the correct quantities and production batch sizes of incoming materials available at the agreed upon time, and at the correct storage? The incoming components must be delivered to the agreed quality, in the correct quantity and packaging, with the correct documentation, at the agreed time and at the agreed place. The components must be available at correct storage area and workstations. At the workplace, the components are provided just in time, taking into account the Kanban quantity and lot size and respecting FIFO. After order completion, the quantity and identification of surplus components have to be controlled. Question P6.1.3 Are incoming materials stored appropriately? And are transport facilities and packing arrangements suitable for the special characteristics of the incoming materials? Suitable transport methods must be used to protect the products from damage and contamination during manufacture and internal transport between processes and to and back from outsourced services. The store areas, workstations and containers must be appropriate for the tidiness and cleanliness required for the components, semi-finished parts and final assembled parts. All packaging requirements related to the customer the supplier and internal must be taken into account and implemented throughout all the production processes. The supply of components and parts at the workstation and on the assembly line must allow for safe handling. Specified maximum and minimum storage times and use by dates for special materials and components must be monitored by appropriate methods. 5S should be implemented and monitored. Question P6.1.4 Are the necessary identifications, records and approvals available and allocated appropriately to the incoming materials at the consecutive process steps? The released incoming materials status must be clearly identified and recognizable at each sequential production step and the release identification on bundles, batches, Kanban boxes and semi-finished and finished parts must be defined during all the production steps. It must be ensured that only released materials and parts are forwarded to the next production process steps and used.
The traceability of the units produced must be ensured according to the customer identification and traceability requirements within a reasonable framework. The special characteristic test results must be documented and archived accordingly. Question P6.1.5 A changes to the product or process made during the serial production tracked and documented. All change management requests must be clearly documented and controlled according the customer requirements. The time frame when the change must be implemented and who is responsible to manage the implementation must be regulated. Changes to the product and process are to be agreed upon, approved and released by the customer, including software changes. A new PPA must be carried out depending on the nature and size of the change. It must be ensured that, at all times, the correct design level of the incoming materials or software is used. And the correct design level of the finished product is manufactured and shipped to the customer. Documentation of change status must be fully traceable. Thank you for watching how to audit P6.1. What goes into the process? In the next video we share, how to audit P6.2. Are all production processes, controlled? We invite you to share this video with your colleagues and friends. Your success is our priority.